Uh, no, let's go closer to the water. <laughs> let's grease it up. Oh, I'm on it. <sighs> What's the thinking here? Squirt it out, lay down, roll around. Just like mustard on a hot dog. <laughs> oh, man, it's hot. Can you believe it's November? No. Yeah. This is global warming. It rocks. It's called Indian summer. Oh. Well, thanks for that. And corn, I guess. <laughs> I'm Dharma. This is Jane. George. Nice to meet you. Hey. So what brings you up here, George? I've come here to die. This land was my ancestor's sacred burial site. For real? For real. Well, we're sunbathing topless, so you'll die happy. <laughs> liver? No. Oh, you're probably tasting kibble. Okay. <laughs> Guess what? what? Tomorrow night, the Attorney General of the United States is taking me to dinner because, and I quote, I don't think I've met that Montgomery guy yet. <laughs> she knows my name! <laughs> shut up! No, you shut up! Janet Reno's taking you to dinner. Janet Reno's buying me a shrimp cocktail. Okay. This sounds kind of shallow, but I kind of want you more now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Dharma, uh, why is there an elderly Native American gentleman wearing my bathrobe? Oh! I prefer Indian. George, this is Greg. Greg, this is George. Hello. Hello. Good night. Good night? George is going to stay with us for a little while. What? Just till he dies. <laughs> Two, three days, tops. <laughs> Dharma, can I see you for a second? <laughs> George, do you need anything? No, I said good night. <laughs> um, what's going on? Oh, well, I met George on the roof. And he said he's dying, and he has to do it here so that the spirits of his ancestors can find him and help guide his soul to a place of peace. Dharma, don't you think that's a bit incredible? Totally incredible. It's awesome. <laughs> no, come on. A, a complete stranger comes up to you on the street, the roof. And, th the roof, and says, I don't know you, but can I die in your apartment? Gee, it sounds bad when you say it. <laughs> Besides, Greg, he didn't ask. I, I invited him. Honey, look. You're a very trusting person, and I love that about you. But there are people out there who prey on people like you. I know that. George is not one of them. How do you know? I just know. I have a feeling. But you can't take a risk like this just because you have a feeling. Why not? I did it with you. <laughs> Heck, I married you on our first date. Fine. Make a good point. <laughs> so he can stay. One night. Look at that, your whole aura just changed. Shut up. No, you shut up. <laughs> Why don't you both shut up? Well, check on aliases, but for now, just run George Little Fox. Okay, I'll hold. I'd do it for you, that's all I'm saying. Pete, you're not coming to dinner with Janet Reno and me. Oh, come on, Greg. I mean, you're a good lawyer. You're gonna move up because you win cases. Me? I... Mean, I... Gotta kiss some ass. <laughs> the Attorney General of the United States, I mean, they don't get any bigger. You know what? Slap on some chapstick. You talk me into it. Really? Get lost. All right, I'll be back, though. That you will. What do you mean he doesn't exist? He's in my house. 
No, no, Little Fox, not Litter Box. What kind of an Indian name is Litter Box? Well, there's got to be something on the guy. All right, call me back. Hello, hello. Mother, what are you doing here? Do I need a reason to come and visit my handsome son? Mother. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm absolutely desperate. The guest speaker at my botanical garden fundraiser has backed out, and I know that you are having dinner this evening with Janet Reno. So I was wondering no. if I... It doesn't hurt to ask. Mother, I really don't feel comfortable asking Janet Reno for a favor. For God's sakes, Gregory, why are you so intimidated by powerful women? <laughs> this. I'm at another table. I choke on a crouton. You Heimlich me. Sure, I get to meet Janet Reno, but you're the big hero. You're too late. Miss Reno is speaking at my fundraiser. Well, that's no fair. I had dibs. You cannot have dibs on the attorney general. She's mine. Yeah? You willing to choke for her? Because I'm not going to fake it. Okay, you guys, I have the perfect solution. I go to dinner with Janet Reno. You hate me. You be disappointed in me. And somehow, I live with it. Oh, I don't suppose you would know anybody who would speak at a botanical garden function. I don't even know anybody who would listen. George, you don't have to do that. I know. No, 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 no. You don't want to spend your last days on Earth doing dishes. Don't you want to do something fun? Like what? I don't know. Is there anything you've ever wanted to do? You know Debbie Reynolds? <laughs> no. Well, I'm okay here. Hi, everybody. What are you guys doing here? Well, Greg called and asked us to check up on you. He asked you to check up on me? And what else did he ask us, Larry? Not to tell Dharma. <laughs> I can't believe he did that. Ah, it's no big deal, honey. He's worried about you. If I had a nickel for every time that I asked a neighbor to check in on your father, I could rebuild the garage he burned down. <laughs> Would you drop it? That was months ago. George, I want you to meet my parents. This is Abby. It's an honor to meet you. Nice to meet you. And this is Larry. Sir, I would like to apologize for all the injustices your people have suffered at the hands of my people. Larry, Larry, your people were in Latvia being chased by Cossacks. But if they were here, they would have joined in. <laughs> my people are joiners, and for that I apologize. Apology accepted. Sorry about that. Last week he apologized to a Chinese waiter for half hour for making him build the railroads. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Little Fox, um, we understand that you're leaving the physical realm, and I am a student of indigenous cultures, and if there's anything I can do to help, I've been told that I do a very moving Paiute death chant. He's not Paiute. Oh! Oh, jeez, is my face red. <laughs> you ought to see it now. Do you mind if we just sit here and shared your vibe? Okay, you guys, you're embarrassing me in front of my friend. I think George just needs some quiet time to himself now. Yeah, I know, but isn't there going to be some sort of death ritual? I mean, I have all my drums and gourds in the van. Actually, I do have some rituals I must perform. Oh, cool. All right. So what are they? Well, before I go, I must take the feathers from my headdress and let them loose in the wind. And at sunset, I must smoke a ceremonial pipe. Uh-huh. What do you put in that pipe? <laughs> Tobacco. Larry, this is his ritual. Yeah. Um, so what else do you need, Mr. Little Fox? Some beetroot to paint my face. How about love that red? Could work. Good. Okay. So, headdress, uh, pipe, face paint. What else? I must wrap myself in the skin of a bear. I'm sorry, Mr. Little Fox, but we don't condone the killing of animals for any purpose. The killing of Indians we had no problem with. <laughs> give it a rest, Lear, okay? I won't give it a rest. We took this man's land and cast him out into the desert. And believe me, my people know about deserts. Forty years we wandered through I one. Know. I know, and that's why we can't have an Egyptian car. <laughs> I just thought of a place to get a bearskin rug. What? Oh, you're taking George? Don't worry, he's leaving his vibe. Leave your vibe. Oh, wow, I can feel... 
feel it. Hey, don't bogart that vibe. Sorry about that. It's all right. Your father's very amusing. <laughs> Thank you. And your mother's very patient. Oh, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> now, this bearskin rug of mine is very valuable. When might I expect him to return it? Oh, uh, that's the thing, Edward. He's going to be buried in it. This guy here, he's not even dead. <laughs> oh, he will be by, what do you say, George, Saturday? I'm hoping Friday. I don't want to ruin your weekend. <laughs> I'm confused here. Uh, what the hell's wrong with a casket? Oh, I have had it with politicians. Perhaps I could find a prominent businessman to speak at my function. I'd be happy to do it. Yes, well, let's not panic just yet. <laughs> Dama? Who is your friend? You are Kitty. Dama. Oh, this is George. He wants to die in my rug. <laughs> okay. Hand it over. Greg, what are you doing here? Dharma, on your way over when you stopped at the bank, Mr. Little Fox here Followed went into... me? No, no, of course not. I called a friend of mine at the FBI. You had me followed by the FBI? Because that's who I know who follows people. <laughs> Dharma, he went into a knife store. Yeah, I know, Greg. He was getting the handle on his hunting knife fix. He wanted to give it to you as a present for letting him stay in our house. God, I'm so sorry about this, George. That's all right. Your husband really loved you. Oh, yeah, right. If he loves me so much, he should... Trust me. Dharma. No, don't even start, Greg. First you have me followed, and then you just rush on in here like a big old macho cowboy. Uh, don't say cowboy in front of the Indian. <laughs> That's okay. I'm a big Dallas fan. I just... What? I, I, I don't even... What, God, I can't even talk to you right now. So, you are a... Native American person. Yes. And you're dying. Thursday or Friday. Does that mean you're free this evening? Sorry I caused you so much trouble. No. It's not your fault my own husband doesn't trust my judgment. Well, you can't blame him. He spends all his time with lawyers and criminals. Half of them you can't trust and the other half are criminals. It's actually kind of funny. I think I'll use it in my speech. There you, go. There you are. Oh, what is he wearing? I said traditional dress. Kitty, it's Brooks Brothers. It came with a vest. Oh, no, I meant headdress, fur, leather, jewelry. Sounds like your friends. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, we, we, we've got at least this little scarf we can put on him. And uh, oh, oh, here, my necklace. Put this on. All right. Oh, this is nice. Yes, well, I'm going to need this back. Well, I get to keep the bearskin rug, right? Oh, yes, that's the deal. Now, you keep him here and make sure that he has some good stories. I remember when Three Com Park was called Candlestick Park. That was three years ago. That long? Oh, good Lord, he's just an old man in a suit. I told you she's fun to mess with. <laughs> this place is nice. Yeah. Wish we'd have been better fighters. George, the sun's going down. Here. Oh, thank you. I can't believe your father made this from a table leg. He's a man of many talents. No, really, it's just the one. <laughs> Excuse me. There's no smoking here. But we're outside. I'm aware of that. But there's a city ordinance that prohibits smoking in public places. Oh. Well, how about if we go over there where there's no people? No. Okay, what if we go to the parking no. lot? No. Well, where can you smoke? Las Vegas. This is this man's sacred ritual. Oh, I understand. It was my sacred ritual for 12 years. But I quit and so can he. He doesn't need to quit, he's dying. Hmm, a connection maybe? <laughs> hmm, jerk face schmucko loser maybe? What are you doing? Leave him alone. Give me that. Hey, oh, you think you're so tough taking a pipe away from a dying man? 
see how you do with a six foot blonde bag and kick your ass. <laughs> You look nice. Thanks. Really nice. Stop sucking up. That's all I have. Can you take a message for me? Well, a favor? Yeah, sure thing. No problem. Don't have to ask me twice. Greg Montgomery's office. I'll put a good word in for you. Now, hold on. Dharma's in jail. You gotta go bail her out. Pete, you're not coming to dinner with Janet Reno. Take the call. Montgomery. Okay, I'll be right there. Pete, you're going to dinner with Janet Reno. Yes! I, I mean, I'm sorry about Dharma and everything, but... Yes. I need a favor. Another favor? What is it with you? You got a cover for me. Janet Reno can't find out why I missed the dinner. What am I supposed to tell her? Pete, you're a lawyer. Lie. But I'm a bad lawyer! So what exactly is the formal charge? Smoking in a public place. Right on. We are so proud of you. For violating the smoking ordinance? For violating any ordinance. Larry, I think I voted for that one. So what? We should protest all laws, especially those we believe in. We cannot be slaves to our own beliefs. There you are. Uh, hi, Sergeant uh, Greg Montgomery, Justice Department. There's the paperwork. What are you doing here? Bailing you out. Are you nuts? This is San Francisco. Do you know how hard it is to get arrested in this town? You're supposed to be having dinner with Janet Reno. Yeah, funny thing. I was on my way out the door when I got a phone call. Did you call him? Absolutely not. Well, how did you find... You're having me followed again? Then it's a good thing, too. God, you are unbelievable. Dharma, I knew this guy would cause trouble. Well, he didn't cause trouble, Greg. I caused trouble. That's my girl. <laughs> oh, good. There you are. I already bailed her out, Mother. Splendid. But I'm looking for the um, Native American fellow. He prefers Indian. Oh, why don't these people just pick something and stick with it? <laughs> Where is he? I thought he was with you. No. Oh, Lord, he's vanished. Oh, no, he couldn't have just vanished. But if he's a shaman, he could have turned into a squirrel and scurried away. Did you check in the trees? <laughs> I would have noticed a squirrel wearing a $5,000 necklace. You gave him your necklace? Yes. And a bearskin rug, a $200 speaking fee, and a Brooks Brothers suit. I knew it. I never should have trusted this guy. Yeah, you never did. And I was right. No, you weren't. I'm sure he's just at the apartment. Why would he go back to the apartment? He doesn't have a key. Wrong again. You gave him a key? Great! He's probably cleaned out the entire place by now! Oh. Oh, I loved that necklace. Now well, think about how he feels. We took all his land, and again, all he winds up with is a string of beads. <laughs> he's probably got my computer and the TV and your new mountain bike. Yeah, and... Greg, he's riding over the Golden Gate Bridge right now, watching cartoons and sending email. <laughs> I just want to see your face when you open the door and he's not there. He'll be there. Fine, open the door. I will. See? He's probably just upstairs. George! Dharma! George! Hold on! George! He's not here, Dharma! That's Greg! Look, the TV's here, and then the stereo's here, and then the computer... Which means he was smart enough not to come back. He's still got the necklace and the money and the... Coming back! Oh, come on, Dharma! Admit it! He ripped us off! Now... I know you want to trust everyone, but you can't. You just can't. That's not the world we live in. Fine, you're right. Does that make you happy? Is that what you want to hear? You're right. Dharma? Dharma? Didn't get to say goodbye. And he was here all by himself. It's okay. No, it's not okay, Greg. I was supposed to help him. I know. I know. I'm so sorry. Oh, God, his headdress. Didn't get to finish his ritual. I was supposed to. He's supposed to let the feathers go out into the wind.
guess now would be a really bad time to say I told you so. <laughs> I graduated at the top of my class from Stanford, and uh, well, I could have gone anywhere, but I said to myself, Greg Montgomery, you've got to work for the Justice Department. Give something back to the people. Ms. Reno, is that your foot? It's a big foot. <laughs> <laughs>